Hello, this is Sahar. I hope you enjoy listening to this podcast. Thank you for being with us. Sahar, it's always such a pleasure to be here for these wonderful conversations. Thank you. Talking about the human sound, which is the voice, let's talk, Stuart, about sound over matter. The human sound is created through the voice. How does the voice affect matter, which is essentially our body? Mm. Well, we, we become very beguiled by the way that somebody sounds, largely because we're fixated on the, on the visual, because we're very literate creatures through contemporary society. And so sometimes we forget about the subtlety of the way that somebody does sound. Yes. Um, and actually, you know, to go to the very core of what your question is all about, we receive through our hearing facility, we receive their note or their pitch but at the same time we receive a whole lot of other data through the sound waves of resonance in their body. And that's the key thing because, I mean, for example, we know that in all successful communication it's not what we say, it's how we say it. So if you like, what we say can be seen to be the initial note, but how we say it is actually the resonance, which is an amplification of the initial idea or the initial note. You speak about sovereignty mm. also in your book and the uniqueness and finding our true note. Mm. How do we do that? How do we find our sovereignty? Yes. What does it mean to be able to speak from the heart? Well, firstly, we have to choose what we want to say because what sound does is to crystallize intention. It's very simple. So, Sound crystallizes intention. Sound crystallizes intention. So maybe solid crystals are, were originally sound vibrations that have become solidified. Yes. That's a possibility. Um, because after all, we produce sound from the moment um, we, we move through the amniotic sac growing to the moment that we actually are born, we produce sound. The sound is at the very core of creation. So the very thing that we do to create ourselves as we independently enter into this world is to make sound. This is how we impact This is how we impact. But to go to the very core of what sovereignty is all about, um, the, what we're really talking about, I believe, is, is our own kingship or our own queenship, if you like, the core of what our personal power is. is exactly. About. How does finding our true note, I suppose, is what yeah. I'm trying to ask. So if we can find our note, we find our, our true self. power. And if we can actually find our personal power, we find our note. If we work 50-50 on both of them, then it seems to me like a very immaculate formula. Is it, is it very much like we each have our own unique sound, so to speak, just like fingerprints are unique and snowflakes exactly. are unique? Exactly. We each have our own unique sound. And this is something that we forget, that your sound is your, so your sound in the sense of the fact that there is not one other living being on this planet that has the sound that you have. And it's also to do with the body? Is this what we talk about when we talk about resonance? How the voice, the sound is actually yeah. resonant? Yeah, yeah. The, the initial note that's produced, if you like, by the vibration of the vocal cord is quite small and then it's amplified throughout the body through the resonance cavities of the body. So one might also say that certain sounds also help to develop the resonance cavities. Yes. That sound actually affects matter. You speak, or rather you write about this in your book, The Alchemy of Voice, mm. and you talk about the temple, actually, that was completely fell down through the use of sound mm. and other experiments. Can you tell us a little bit about the sound over matter? Mm. Mm. Well, when we go to the books of wisdom, for example, like the Judeo-Christian tradition of the Bible, we, we can read many stories about the use of sound, and one of them is the fact that we are told that Joshua in the Old Testament and yes. his people walked around the city of Jericho. They blew, I believe that they walked around seven times and they blew their trumpets and gave a great shout and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. So the hypothesis that this puts forward is that actually by knowing the note of a structure, an inanimate structure, one can actually either create it or destroy it. Amazing. <laughs> and I believe that that's actually what we do in our culture with harsh words that maybe we're not consciously aware of the sound, but we're really conscious 
of the emanation from our bodies. Because sometimes when we are in very negative feeling states, we wish we, we wish to destroy. You make a very valid point, or, or rather you put it in a way that becomes obvious that the throat, where the sound emanates from, yes. is positioned between the heart and the mind. Yes, and the head. Yes. And, and the head. So when people are really actually talking at us, it's more from the head. Whereas when we engage the heart, this is when we come closer to our center of resonance. Yes, that's right. What about the little boy? Can we talk about how literally sound affects matters in terms of healing and... Mm. Mm. Um, well, this is the story of Tom. Yes, I think, I think it's to. fascinating. There's a case study that I write about in, in, this, in this book. Um, Tom's mother was a client of mine. She, was, she just happened to be an international opera singer. Yes. In other words, she was very tuned into the power of sound because as a singer she was constantly using the power of sound. Yes. Um, and so we were working instrumentally on producing higher degrees of vibration in her own sound through something that is known as harmonic overtones. Yes. Which is producing one pitch and then shaping resonance cavity with the mouth and producing other pitches. If you like, I can give you a quick illustration. Yes, please. He There's one sound, but I'm also splitting it, rather than like light shining through a, through a prism, it's suddenly one light becomes many lights, and they're yes. known as harmonic overtones. So we were working on this, and, and then she disappeared for about six months, and I knew that she had a growing family and was relocated, having lived in Europe for many years, she was relocated in the United Kingdom. However, then she called me one day and said, help, 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 can you please help my son? And the story... Um, the story goes on to suggest that her son Tom had an inoperable brain tumour. Tumour, yes, right. And she wanted me to meet Tom to see if I could actually provide some form of succour or healing or um, whatever. To help him. With to help him. him. Mm. And so I met Tom, and Tom was a very remarkable young man, seven, eight, nine years of age, with this very, very large brain tumour that he unfortunately was supposedly dying from. Um, I introduced to him the whole notion of the fact that thought creates reality and that through certain physiological states like relaxation when we move into the zone, when, it, when indeed we are in alpha, which I talk about very fully in the, in the book, we become very potently powerful um, both in terms of our psyche and our physicality. So taking him into relaxation states, asking him to use certain visualization processes yes. and certain sounds he was actually able to completely change his psychophysical state to the point where one day I was telephoned by his mother yeah. to discover that the brain tumour had actually disintegrated by the use of sound that he had used. And the story was that his visualisation process was that he imagined flying around Mount Tumour in an aeroplane. Yes. And the particular day that, that I'm speaking of, that when his mother telephoned me, that he had continued with the same visualization process, but on this occasion, nothing would happen when he pressed the buttons on his joysticks, i.e. He, he was designed in allowing his um, plane to fly around Mount Tumor, and then he would press buttons and missiles would be sent off into Mount Tumor to disintegrate it. And on this particular occasion, it didn't happen. Experiencing this unique phenomenon, albeit we're talking about a, an eight-year-old child, he then realized that something very radical had happened to his, own, his, his whole biophysiology. And so he asked the doctors to check, and they were also very disturbed by the fact that um, his um, vital pulses were radically different. Really? And so they immediately took him down for a CAT scan, and they discovered that actually he had no tumor. <laughs> this tumor was the size of a small grapefruit. Oh my gosh. So this was considered to be miraculous. Um, I asked Tom what he felt had happened, and he said, well, it's very simple, isn't it? So I said, well, what is simple? And he said, well, the missile that was unexpected was sent by God. <laughs> and it was very matter of fact for him. So um, this young man is going to be a very remarkable universal teacher about the substance of spirit and the spirit consciousness within our lives. That's amazing. So his innocence, being a child, he just accepted that he had Completely to do this accepted. visualization, use of sound, and it was actually physically impacted his tumor, and mm. it's now disappeared. Absolutely. 
Stewart, you've worked or you've helped London win the Olympic bid, let's say. Mm. How does the work of sound actually help us in a practical way in the corporate world? I know you also work with many corporations and, and individuals in the business world. Mm. What happens when we find our true note? Mm. We're literally moving into the zone. You talk about the zone or, or finding our sync, falling in sync with our own life when we speak from the heart. Mm. In terms of the business world, what does that mean? Or let me say, well, how do you help people in yeah, the business world? Um, I think we all probably know that when we give significant introduction or a persuasive presentation, if we are pitching to develop rapport and therefore the contract is signed, that it's not what we say, it's actually how we say it. Yes. And so the, the formula that I put forward is that if we're really tuning into our note, what actually happens is that our voices become extremely magnetic. A magnetic voice means that it has physical weight, yes. or if you like, gravitas, which always resonates from a feeling of authority or personal power. But at the same time, it becomes a streamlined communication for specific intention, which draws people in, it compels people in rather than repels them. Yes. So in short, the formula is that if we are resonating from our note with specific intention, we establish instantaneous rapport, we draw people in, and therefore harmonious relationships are established, contracts are signed, dispute is Resolved. disbanded. Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's really about inclusion rather than exclusion. The, the development of any form of rapport is about, okay, um, let's get on well together, even though we're completely separate human beings, let's go, get on well together so that we can actually have harmonious relationships. So it sounds to me that we make it a lot easier to make things happen. We draw them to us rather than chase after them absolutely. or push them away. Yes, absolutely. Finally, Stuart, on a, on a lighter note, yes. if you're going on a much-deserved holiday, what are three treasured items that you're most likely to pack with you when you go? <laughs> you're allowed only three. <laughs> three treasured items that I would wish to take with me. Well, the first would be my iPod. It ha would have to be so. Because if there were any moments when I was left in need of the inspiration of sound from any other quarter other than my inner being, then I would need to be awakened by the outer presence of my iPod. The second would have to be um, my favourite composer, music from my favourite yes. composer. The third would actually have to be complete silence. This would be my most treasured. So I would have a box of silence that I would take with me. That's a wonderful thought. <laughs> Often a box of silence comes in the forms of earplugs. <laughs> so you completely so I can tune off, off, yes. I mean, in a week's time I should be in New York City and I know the first thing I'm going to make sure I pack are my earplugs. Oh, how amazing. And um, of course I know that your new CD has been remixed, so to speak, and it's just come out, so I look forward to hearing that. And we look forward to your second book, Heart Sounds. Thank you.